You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is BRFM 95.6, our very own local community radio station right here on the Isle of Sheppey. You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with me, Daniel. And now it's time to hear the interview I did when I was out and about earlier on at the Sittingbourne Police Station. And uh, I caught up with Chief Inspector Tony Henley. And uh, he's going to be talking all about how the Sittingbourne Police Station is set to become the operational hub of policing in Swale. This is what happened when I spoke to him. So we are out and about here at the Monday Night Community Show on BRFM. We're at the Sittingbourne Police Station and we're going to be talking to Tony Henley. Um, Thank you very much for taking the time out to uh, speak to us firstly. You're welcome. Good evening. Now, I was wondering if you could perhaps uh, introduce yourself to our listeners with a little bit about your uh, role here. Yes, certainly. Uh, I'm, as you say, Tony Henley. I'm the Chief Inspector, and as such, I'm the District Commander. Uh, That means I've got responsibility for the policing of Swale. That's Faversham, Sheerness and Sittingbourne. Uh, And my job is to deliver policing locally. Now, the uh, idea today is to talk all about this um, idea of Sittingbourne becoming the Swale Hub. So I was wondering if you could uh, tell our listeners a bit more about that. Yes, certainly. Um, These changes uh, have been decided. I've made these decisions um, as a part of an ongoing and regular review that I do around our policing services and particularly around our operational policing. Um, It's done regularly in all districts across the county and indeed probably around the country. Um, it's an operational decision, so I'm, what I'm after is improving the levels of service we provide uh, to our, our residents of Swale and enabling my officers to deliver that first-class service that I strive to achieve. Um, pulling our resources uh, is really to help me manage the demand on the entire district. Um, having an uh, operational hub like this, I think, will make it fluid and flexible way of working, which allows us that we can have the right people the right numbers, uh, at the right place, at the right time, and able to, to, to respond to demand. Um, I think the most important thing, particularly for your listeners, is it's got no impact at all on the station at Sheerness. We've got no plans to withdraw the operational um, uh, station from, from Sheerness, and we will still have officers deployed from there. Um, uh, and I think that is an important message, clearly, that, that some of your listeners may be concerned about. Um, Sittingbourne, as the operational hub, will serve as a, as a place where officers are briefed and either, uh, they'll report at Sittingbourne and then they will, at the beginning of the shift, and then they will go out to their allocated work across the whole district. Um, the other point I'd like to put very across very strongly is this, this is not part of the 999 system, so that remains completely unaffected. Um, the 999 crews, the response crews, as we, as we, as we call them, are actually commanded by a, a, an entirely different command structure. And so that remains unchanged. It is simply we're changing the the way uh, the reporting centre for uh, our neighbourhood officers who deal with local crime and investigate local crime. So we are continuing to hear the interview I did when I was out and about earlier here at the Monday Night Community Show. And I caught up with Chief Inspector Tony Henley right here at BRFM. I understand that you're going to be using some new technology, so I was hoping you could tell our listeners a bit about that. Yes, uh, interestingly, we, we, for the last year, we have been operating a system called predicted policing. Uh, this is something that was started in America. Um, Kent was the first force in the country to understand it and to adopt it. Uh, and indeed, Swell, along with our colleagues in Medway, Dartford and Gravesham, were the first uh, districts to adopt it. It, it, It's a very complicated, which I don't understand in terms of how it works, but in effect, uh, what it tells us is that the zones or the areas of where we can anticipate crime disorder will will be occurring. Um, It's much more accurate uh, and discreet than other systems we've used before. Uh, And we've had it for a year now, and the indications are that it's working very well. And this enables us to effectively task our neighbourhood officers and all our other resources, response officers, any any police officer that's in a particular area will be charged with going and uh, visiting the zone, 
uh, and dealing with whatever they see in there. Um, and I think that enables me to, if you like, produce, uh, gives me some more flexibility around where we can put other officers in terms of responding to, to crimes that have actually happened. Uh, it's working well, uh, and that's um, this is part of why we're, we're, we're reviewing the way we work. Now I understand you wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, town centre. Yes, I mean, clearly this reorganisation is about trying to match our staff with demand. Um, there is a constant demand in the town centre, uh, and I know um, Sheerness uh, is a busy place, uh, and so we will be putting a dedicated named officer um, in the town, um, We'll be announcing it will be shortly, but that's clearly to work um, more closely with our our, our um, shopkeepers, supporting the Swell Safe scheme that we've been a great supporter of the radio network, uh, and I think because of the what goes on in the town in terms of demand, that seems that we will always be there. So let's have somebody in there all the time, uh, and that's what we intend to do. So will this be affecting um, the PCSOs? No, they will still report from uh, Sheerness Police Station. Uh, we're actually uh, recruiting more PCSOs as a force and we will benefit from that. Um, so that's uh, really good news. Uh, and they will continue to police the districts. In terms of public um, wanting to get in contact with us, uh, there's never been any more, more ways than there are currently to uh, contact the police through Twitter, through Facebook, through our, our website. Um, our surgeries which we will continue so all those remain unchanged um, the PCSOs will continue to be amongst the communities uh, and assisting uh, and making and reassuring people. So I was wondering if you could tell our listeners a little bit about the police contact points. Yes this is an initiative which has been brought in by the um, Police Crime Commissioner Anne Barnes um, it's about increasing our uh, visibility and availability to, to our rural communities uh, we have a PCSO who um, will visit a number of rural locations uh, on a two-weekly cycle. Um, it'll be the same place at the same time every every two weeks. Um, and I think uh, the, the, the uh, details of anybody who wants to contact them or be and meet the PCSO are all on the website. But it's about trying to be more visible and uh, more accessible in, in the rural communities. Uh, of which the island is is part of that. Well, Tony, I'd like to thank you very much for uh, taking the time out today to talk to us uh, and talk to us a little bit about how things are changing. Thank you, and you're very welcome, and thank you for coming and talking to us.